this is Joy Kibmeyue welcoming you to our beautiful, beautiful show at the well. At the well, women would meet in the traditional ways and talk about the issues of life, talk about their issues. But here at the well, we meet the man Jesus Christ. Just as he met the Samaritan woman and fixed her issues, he can also fix your issues here at the well. This show comes to you every Tuesday at 10 a.m. East African time and I'm glad to welcome you today as we look at the virtue of generosity. This is something we all know. This is something we are admonished from time to time whether from church or the traditional front or societal front we are always admonished to give or to be generous. That means there must be something about giving that is good for us. So, this is, what is generosity? We already know what it is, but let me attempt to just say what it is. It is giving to another person something that is yours without obligation and without expectation as an act of freedom that a person can choose. Meaning, you can actually choose to give or not to give. It is out of your free will. So what does the Bible say about generosity? Some of the scriptures I'll share are very well known to us, but there are so many. From Genesis to Revelation, we are admonished to give. We see acts of generosity and even the effects of generosity. The first scripture I want to share, which we know very well, is found in 2 uh, Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6 and 8. Allow me to read it very briefly or rather quickly. Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of, of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Wow, I feel like just stopping here, you know. It's like we've already covered everything about generosity. But in Malachi chapter 3 verse 10 and 12, just two verses it says, Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will be no room enough to store it. I will prevent pests from devouring your crops and the vines in your fields will not drop with will not drop their fruit before it is ripe says the Lord Almighty then all the nations will call you blessed for yours will be a delightful land says the Lord Almighty this is found in the Old Testament let me share a couple of uh, other verses and then we delve into this beautiful subject of generosity Acts chapter 20 verse 35 says in everything I did I showed you that by this kind of hard work we must help the weak remembering the words of the Lord Jesus himself who said it is more blessed to give than to receive and in Luke chapter 11 verse 13 it says if you then though you are evil know how to give good gifts to your children how much more will your father in heaven give the holy spirit to those who ask him and the one that everyone knows everyone who has been to sunday school or to church is john 3 16 for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life wow generosity giving i'm just reminded of a verse in i think it's romans 8 32 which says if god did not withhold his own son but gave him up for us will he withhold anything good from us meaning God gives us the best. He is the best example 
of a giver and he does it cheerfully so he's not demanding of us to do it cheerfully when he himself does it grumpingly god is a giver and he has shown us what it means to give by giving us the best his only son jesus christ to die for my sin and your sin what are the dawns of generosity what are some of the things we should not do when we are giving don't give out of guilt oh they will see that i did give um, these days people are uh, having a lot of fundraisers because of medi uh, medical bills because of deaths even because of weddings and uh, they like to put us on whatsapp groups for fundraising and let me admonish you here don't just start a whatsapp group and put people's names without their consent with their consent it is better to request and say oh i have this need can i uh, probably put you on it so that you can be part of uh, the people who are fundraising or give a link and let people choose to be part of it or not to be part of it. You remember at the beginning I said it is out of our free will that we give or we don't give. So don't give out of guilt that they'll say mbona hakupeana why didn't they give and everyone else is giving. Don't give to make something that you did wrong right, you know, to correct a wrong. Don't give for the purposes of prestige or fame. Remember what Jesus uh, used to say about the Pharisees, that they go to the uh, streets and they show off as they give and they do so that men can, you know, praise them. I remember uh, a woman, a widow, who went with two coins and put in and Jesus was observing as people were giving their offering and you see being God he could see the hearts of everyone that was giving even as he can see your heart and my heart as we do what we do and the Pharisees and the Sadducees I mean Sadducees and the the, the leaders uh, and the, 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 uh, the leaders of the law Teachers of the law would go and lift up their offering and drop it so that everyone can see, you know, read this is a, a $100 bill, you know, and throw in. Or this is a, an 1,000 a note, Kenya note, and throw in so that everyone can see what you're giving. That is what the Pharisees did. But Jesus observed everyone as they went in to give. And there was this little widow who went with two coins and slowly she went in and just dropped it in of course feeling oh god i don't have much to give but this is all i can be able to give so don't do this don't give for the sake of fame or prestige don't give expecting a reward i remember jesus saying to the crowds if we give to those who are able to give us then what do we what makes us different from the rest of the people don't give expecting a reward when you give just give just give don't give expecting to influence something you know i want to believe that that is what uh, our politicians do now we are in an electioneering mode it is already set and people have started moving up and down looking for votes and sometimes people give money and they corrupt the minds of the voters and their people if you give to a woman who is not expecting any, to have any food you know and their children are going to sleep hungry or to have no food what, uh, whatsoever and you just come in on time to give them this 50 shilling note or a hundred shilling note and they have a meal for the day they will go saying that is the person i'm going to vote for why because you have given to influence i believe bribery falls into this uh, particular uh, category of giving to influence do not give so that you can influence something or someone to do something for you in return uh, don't give to fulfill an obligation for the sake of giving because you are expected to give so you give don't give on the basis of self-interest for what you can gain out of what you give just give 
just give cheerfully as we have been admonished in the word of God. If you do give out of guilt or to correct a wrong or because of prestige or to influence something or out of obligation or self-interest, then you lose the virtue of generosity because you're not giving you know, to benefit someone else, it is out of a selfish motive. So let us not give out of selfish motive. And this uh, uh, admonition or encouragement is from the great Greek philosopher called Aristotle. Aristotle, the great Greek philosopher. That is what he admonishes us to be able to maintain the virtue of generosity. So, what are some of the benefits of giving? I'll just list them out for you. The benefits of giving. Number one, you receive great satisfaction in life. That is fulfillment when you give. You gain more friends because you're generous. Of course, when you're mean, <laughs> you're even so mean that your friends are also calculated and there are very few in number. Number three, you get and gain stronger relationships with people that you know and you are happier in your career because you give, you're generous and then you're more positive. You have a more positive outlook to life when you are generous and then you, are, uh, uh, you have better physical and emotional and mental health when you give because there is some fulfillment that comes out of giving. There is satisfaction when you give and you also have higher self-esteem because when you give and people are grateful and they say, oh, thank you, you have no idea what this means to me. It actually lifts your self-esteem. So there are benefits. These are just eight of them, but there are many, many benefits of giving. So what are, according to the Bible, this, this was more on a general note or a psychological or emotional, mental note, uh, the, the benefits of giving. But what about biblically? What are the biblical benefits of giving? When we give, it is uh, evidence of our obedience to God. Because from the verses that we have looked at, we are admonished throughout the word of God to give and to give cheerfully. So when we give, we do it in obedience to God. Number two, it helps us to set our priorities straight. That is, you don't give in expectation. You don't give because of what you will get. You give because you have already received. We read that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him will not perish. God already gave to you. So give because of what you have already received. So that sets your priorities right. You're not giving out of what you will get, but you're giving because you have received. Freely you have received, freely give. Number three, giving increases our faith because when we give, we are rewarded for our giving. And so, as you give and you get a reward from your giving, as you give and you see this principle of giving that says, give and it shall come back to you, shaken together, pressed down, overflowing. When you see the results, then you have more faith to keep giving. It increases our faith. Number four, giving acknowledges that God owns it all. Everything we have, even our own health, even the giftings that we have, even our monies and substances, everything we have has come from God. So when we give, we acknowledge it is not mine. It all belongs to God, but I am a good steward, so I'm going to share the little that I have with somebody else who does not have. Number five, giving leads us to joy and fulfillment. When you give, the Bible says God loves a cheerful giver. Have you ever gone to a place and there's a situation and you come in and help that situation by your giving either of your time, your substance, maybe it was a sick person and you say, no, I will rush them to hospital. Or you just, just a, a good act of giving 
and it changes the whole place. Then you are fulfilled and you have joy. Number six, giving blesses us abundantly. Give and it shall come back to you in good measure, shaken down, pressed together. The principle of giving actually goes beyond religion. We have seen some people in society who may not necessarily fear God or profess to the Christian faith, but when they give, this principle works. You give and you receive because you have given. Number seven, giving makes us more compassionate and we are more involved in the work of God. Give to missionary work, give to the church, give, give, give whenever you get an opportunity to give. Sometimes even give out of your lack. That is sacrificial giving. There are times you give the last coin that you have. And because this principle works well, because God is no man's debtor, you receive because of giving out of your own lack. So giving is a beautiful virtue. And especially for us in the household of faith, we cannot ignore this virtue. So today, I admonish you to be a giver. And this is a virtue that can actually be learned. You know, you keep holding on to the little you have, but if you open up your heart and say, God, I realize and recognize that you are the one who has given me everything I do, I will begin to live. You can learn to give and you can become a great giver to the glory and honor of the Lord Jesus Christ. Allow me to pray with you. Heavenly Father, thank you for reminding us of this great virtue of giving. You have modeled it to us in the scriptures. You have given your very best, even Jesus Christ, your son. And you say, if you cannot withhold anything good from us, how can we withhold from others? You have given to us, oh God, help us to give because we have already uh, received from you. Help us to give without expecting, oh God, because we are already so blessed and we can be a blessing to somebody else. So help us to be generous people. Help us to give because of what we have already received. I pray for my brother and my sister who is watching and listening to me today that they will learn this beautiful virtue of giving that you may in turn bless them, oh God. You even say in your word that when we go to our home and we are blessed with just a glass of water, we should leave a blessing because those people have given out of what they have. So help us to be givers that we may glorify you. Help us to test you in our giving that you may open the windows and doors of heaven and pour in our laps so much that we cannot be able to handle that your blessings may overtake us because of giving, because you are no man's debtor. I pray this with thanksgiving in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Give cheerfully because you have received from God. God bless you as you learn the virtue of giving. See you on Tuesday, 10 o'clock East African time at the well where Jesus fixes your issues. Amen.